hey guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to look into the exceptional luo people now before we continue please press that subscribe button it helps a lot on to the video now the luo are several ethnically and linguistically related nilotic ethnic groups they inhabit an area ranging from south sudan ethiopia through northern Uganda and eastern Congo uh, into western Kenya and the Mara region of Tanzania. Now, the Luo Nation belongs to the western branch of the Nilotic language family. And um, it is comprised of several subgroups. So these uh, are in South Sudan, the Shiluk, Anuak, Ari, Acholi, Balandabor, Duri, and Luo. Those in Uganda include the Alur, Acholi, Kumam, Lango, and Batola. In the RC Congo, you're going to find the Alur. The ones in Kenya and Tanzania are the Joluo or the Luo proper. Now let's talk Luo languages. The southern Luo languages are mutually intelligible in varying degrees. Now listen to the following samples of a few Luo languages. <laughs> Today, the Luo of Kenya who call themselves the Joluo, aka Jaluo, people of Luo, are the fourth largest community in Kenya after the Kikuyu, Luya, and the Kalenjin. In 2019, the population was estimated to be 5 million strong. In Tanzania, they numbered an estimated 2 million. Kisumu, which from personal experience is so awesome, is the third largest city in Kenya. It is a major commercial and cultural hub of the Luo nation. Other Luo cities are Gulu in Uganda and Nigambela in Ethiopia. Now, let's look into their origins. About 800 years ago, in the early centuries of the second millennium AD, southern Luo groups migrated south from Bahar El Ghazal area in South Sudan. And between about 1500 to 1800 AD, the Luo proper crossed into present-day Kenya and eventually into present-day Tanzania. They inhabited the area on the shores of Lake Victoria. According to Luo of Kenya, a warrior chief named Ramogi Ajuan led them into present-day Kenya. Now, here is something interesting. As in Uganda, some non-Luo people in Kenya have adopted Luo language. For instance, a majority of the Suba people who are originally Bantu in Kenya speak Doluo as a first language and have largely been assimilated. Here is an interesting question. Do Luos have a look? Short answer, no. Despite some opinions, the Luo people, more so the Kenyan component, don't really have a typical look. But why? 
due to interactions with other African groups and of course intermarriages, their features today are very diverse. However, it is believed that the South Sudan Luos, alongside other Nilotic tribes there like the Nuer and the Dinka, are one of Africa's and arguably the world's tallest ethnic groups. This is why many African international supermodels are actually Luo. Evidently, Luo women are truly gorgeous. Is there a typical Luo personality? The answer is actually yes. Speaking from a Kenyan perspective, Luos are quite unique in their character. For one, they have a flamboyant nature and a sense of style founded on three tenets. Pakrok, which means self-praise, Nyadi, which alludes to their bravado, and lastly Sunga, which refers to their pride. Now, don't take it the wrong way because this sense of pride and self-praise are undertaken in good faith. The community's chest thumping is not done out of arrogance but as tribute to the efforts they have invested to attain their achievements. This is in addition to their polished and eloquence in command of the English language, otherwise known as the Queen's English. Uh, the, uh, you see, the current MPs, I want to say that uh, they are suspect hypocritical politicians who are only going to titillate the minds of Kenyans in order to vamoose their tedium and vacuous ideologies, in order to to please their capricious gods of magic, political personality cults in this country. These guys, are, they are being tormented by two, the following two spirits, Incabis and Sakabis. The bravado that Luos uh, possess clearly manifests during moments of political upheaval in Kenya. Being a very politically vigorous nation, Luos will often be seen on Nairobi and Kisumu streets openly clashing with the riot police, fighting injustice and oppression. They don't fear police. The police fear them. Not even bullets or tear gas will stop them. Personally, this is something that I admire. Now, another aspect that makes the Luo nation great is the great contribution to Kenya's glory through its accomplishments in sports. Nothing exemplifies this better than Gormahia, a predominantly Luo football team, which is the only team from Kenya and East Africa to win the African continental title to date. They have also won the Kenyan Premier League a record of 18 times. Additional example is the Kenyan national rugby team, the Shujas, who in 2016 won the World Rugby Sevens tournament against Fiji. The Luo Nation has produced some of the world's most accomplished and famous personalities. Here are some of them.
Dubrovnik group has a strong music tradition and the music is present at every hour of the day and night. It's always had a functional role to underline important events such as religious ceremonies, political events, festivals or sporting events. The Luo used numerous musical instruments from percussions with the drums and rattles to rutu and the nyatiti to wind instruments made from the horns of keto. Luo dance is usually elegant and graceful and they use traditional costumes and ornaments that are designed to improve and emphasize the movements rather than to beautify the wearer. Today, Luo music has evolved and crossed the borders. It has even influenced Benga. However, an authentic and unmistakably Luo style referred to as Ohangla has emerged. So, what do Luo's eat? Luo diet is greatly influenced by the immediate environment and since the Luo's occupy a vast area, it is very varied. In Kenya, for instance, a typical low diet will consist of corn, which is ugali, which is made from sorghum, millet, or maize, accompanied by fish, meat, or vegetable stews. This reminds me of my time in Kisumu a few years back, where I had the best fried fish ever. I'm telling you, huh? this dish was super delicious. Mm, I think once this corona thing is over, I'll come back, definitely. On to our next topic, tradition. Many ceremonies and, uh, and uh, traditional rites are no longer celebrated today, mainly because of the influence of colonialist and Christianity. For example, the practice of removing the lower teeth is no longer executed, as well as the tattoos that were drawn on the back of girls. However, there are some occasions that continue to be celebrated in a traditional manner. And these are marriage and funerals. Let's talk marriage. The ceremony of uh, traditional marriage takes place in various phases. And the first phase is called a year and it entails the payment of a sum of money to the mother of the bride by the groom. The second phase provides for the delivery of keto to the father of the bride by the groom. Now, these ceremonies defining the bread price are followed by the ritual of Meko, that is girl kidnapping, in quotes, to bring her to the house of her husband. Finally, the ceremony of the actual wedding takes place, followed by the sacrifice of a bull and a big, big party. Lua funerals. The funeral is a major event involving the relatives, but also all members of the community. The burial must take place on Luo land, regardless of where a person has lived all his life. The participation in the funeral is an important ritual obligation for all Luo. It is the occasion to pay tribute to a loved one and also an opportunity to socialize with family and friends and to forge marriage alliances. Now, the funeral lasts four days for a man and three for a woman. And during these days, large quantities of beer and the meat of sacrificed animals are consumed to honor the deceased. After the burial and the, the externalization of the pain, there is always a time for party and celebration. Let's talk Luo economy. The Luo can be found in every sector of the economy and they derive their livelihood from fishing, farming, business, and due to widespread literacy, Luo professionals occupy all sectors of the formal economy. Luos are very intelligent and that is why they have a very strong presence and representation in academia and medicine. The Luo nation is indeed fascinating and unique. In fact, someone told me recently that if you don't have a Luo friend or a friend from the lakeside, you are missing out on a serious part of what makes Kenya. Is this true? Lua people in the comments, please kindly confirm and give reasons. Now, did you enjoy this video? If so, please consider subscribing. If you do, I will make more videos like this, I promise. Also, suggest which tribe I should cover next. Thanks for your time and see you in the next one.